Let me go all the way back. Um, um, I, there's a lot of things to discuss about arriving at this. So, first of all, I grew up, I'm an immigrant son. I grew up in Brownsville, Brooklyn, immigrant family. Um, we were poor, but we didn't feel poor. But let me get past that. Um, in the tenements we lived in, the walls were repainted and repainted and repainted a thousand times. Um, the old, by painters, the old paint wasn't stripped off. So what you had when I was a young man was these walls that were painted where the paint got thick. And the molding on the paint, um, the molding on the walls stuck through the paint. And I absolutely loved it when the sun came through the windows, little boy used to look at it. Um, so there was a great feeling. And then when I walked in the streets, the push carts and the food that came in wooden crates were broken open. And the push carts were wood. And most of the buildings, and so many of the buildings, were old wood going back to the turn of the century. And they were repainted a lot, but the paint was faded by, you know, 100 years of snow and rain, repainted and faded again. I used to love the colors. I used to love the way the paint was flaked. <clears throat> and I used to love the nails and, and the wood crates. We also built all our toys in those days. This is before television. So, and we were poor, so we built guns and we built sticks and we built um, little homes all out of crates and the nails. And I got very good with a hammer and the nail and breaking wood apart. And, uh, you can get a great, old wooden fences we used to take down. So you had a great feeling for wood, cement, nails. That was all around me. The synagogue we went to was an old wooden synagogue that leaned on its side and the walls were painted uh, with pictures of various scenes from Israel, badly painted. Beautiful. Um, and that is how I grew up. Okay, the, and living in New York City now, when I got to be older, walking around Manhattan, Soho in the 60s, before the regentrification, how do you say that? Regentrification? Regentrification was... You had the steel buildings in Soho and the waterfront and all these things that I wandered around with, with a camera taking pictures of people, places. I loved the Lower East Side. Um, and I loved it because it reminded me of growing up also was part of what I visualized. So I had this tremendous love of uh, grit and this love of what New York's about and this love of what real paint's about. When I got into animation, it's that love which has exactly put me into heavy traffic and Coonskin and Fritz the Cat. It allowed me to get more real with Disney. It allowed me to use real photograph backgrounds that I took myself instead of painted backgrounds. It allowed me to record voices in the street of real people doing the talking and not acting. All of it was part of the same, <clears throat> part of the same um, process that I was unwittingly in love with. This is all, you know, I had no idea when I was doing traffic and Fritz and everything, and I so loved the early wood and everything. That was all in me. Um, then when I started to be a painter, I occasionally did the constructions along with my painting, but I never knew what the constructions were about. I had a couple of shows at Amazing Gallery where I brought some along with my illustrations and my other paintings, which were figurative, and you could recognize what you're looking at. Um, I always loved making them, but I didn't know what they were about yet. Um, I could make a long story short, uh, the process now in my 70s, and the process has started, is what I consider finally I've arrived home. I've stopped doing all my other work, the kind of other work I used to do, because I finally found exactly what I want to do, exactly what I believe in in art. It's been a, um, a very long process. Can you talk a little bit more about the process, kind of the evolution from, you know... That's where I go now. Right, right. now, you got it. Great. So, the process is very... Is, it's many, there are many aspects to the process. I'll try to give you as many as I could, and some of them were just a, a miracle. Okay. But I had to go from the old stuff to let you know why this stuff's important, yeah. emotionally. Um, uh, the process starts sometimes many different ways. The process starts with a thought about a, a street that I remember. Or the process starts with a photograph that I took of the street. Or a photograph I took of a door. Um, and 
I start to build that image, or it starts with a drawing or a sketch, but mainly from a thought um, or a photograph. I start to build around the photograph, and the first thing I do is get very real with this. I'm putting sticks and paint and stones up together um, in a way that represents what I'm looking at or thinking about. But halfway through it, as all things, that gets to be wrong for some reason. It happens with every one of them. It gets to be, I can't start without it, but somewhere along the line, for reasons unknown to me, I get to hate that. It gets to be wrong, stiff, and not right. So I start breaking it apart. And now I cement these things with plaster and glue and paint. So as I break it apart with heavy tools, um, it leaves marks and traces. You know, as you rip up the old wood that you're putting, it splinters, it breaks. And when you don't rip it all up, you rip, let's say, 50% up, for lack of a number. Now I'm looking at 50% left and 50% of rips and tears and smudged paint and underpainting that's been ripped up. And that excites me. That is so beautiful to me because that's closest to how I used to feel things from my youth and see art and see the streets that I'm painting, which are streetscapes. This, my streets in New York. And I start building very carefully on top of those marks. Now, those marks are now... So, once I start building on top of those marks, I'm just remembering what I try to do in the beginning, but that's all gone, because the marks are taking me in a new direction. And that's when I end up with the completed piece, in other words, which is half dreamlike on the second half. It's very realistic in the beginning and becomes very dreamlike and emotional and accidental um, in the second half. And the combination of the two make for what you're looking at. It makes for a realism that is also slightly abstract. It makes for an emotional, abstract feeling of love that I have for this material, along with the reality of the street or the doorway I started with. Um, there's some synagogues in here, that, um, and there's some old buildings called Hester Street and stuff. Where, you know, so what it is is a series of realistic approaches that then turns totally abstract, it, um, going with marks of rip-up. It's pure chance when you're ripping it up, you don't know. But when you rip it up, it looks so beautiful, I can't describe it. If I had real courage, I'd stop right there. And maybe one day I will, and just say, okay, half of it's finished and half of it's ripped, but the whole thing is what I want. Um, I kind of get in the trance at the end. I'm not quite sure what's happening. I'm not, you know, it's very hard to remember a piece. Um, you know, I, have to look, I have to go back a bunch of times to see what I did. At the end of it, because I'm sort of in a trance at the end, I'm not quite sure what it looks like. It takes me a couple of days of it sitting around for me to look at. Then the final process is I either leave it alone or I paint on top of that. In other words, that's another decision that's hard to make. Um, but once I'm finished, when I'm constructing, I'm not exactly thinking of painting. But when I'm just about finished construction, I think about painting, which is what are the colors that these things are supposed to be? And what were the colors that I originally remembered? So the painting starts close to the end instead of the beginning, which is really strange. Um, yeah, some of the painting from the beginning, but when I do it realistically, I do start with painting. Um, it's still there. So it's all of those mixes and matches. And I would say that's what the city is about. In other words, when I'm finished, that's what a street's about. That's what the old turn of the century buildings are about. That's what the walls are about. That's what nature did on its own over 100 years. All I'm what I'm doing is I'm recreating what nature does. This is what a painting is about. It's not about size or ego. It's about simple, simple materials. Do you think you've achieved a breakthrough with your own personal career? That's not for me to say. <laughs>